Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Now, in the past videos, I've been dealing with uh, the first five propositions of Euclid. And in this video, I'm going to uh, deal with proposition six of Euclid. And so I want to first of all inform you that propositions four through nine are all about isosceles triangles okay so uh, the majority of them are unnecessary as I'm about to explain to you simply because uh, their truth is easily understood uh, using requirement three which means that uh, it is possible to have a symmetrical path about a given center okay that's requirement three now, it's very important that you read my free article. It's actually almost 30 slides long, more of a presentation, which is about the topic of there being no axioms or postulates in sound mathematics. And I've also had it translated into Greek. I will place both those links in the details section. It's probably, not probably, it is the most important article in mathematics you will have ever read in your life so i would not only read it but i would take the time to study it if i were you and it doesn't matter if you're an Abel prize winner or a high school student you still need to study it because you've never understood these things and i'm explaining these things to you because i do know better than you so uh don't believe me uh read and study what I'm telling you to do and see whether I'm right or wrong. That's the only way you'll know. Okay? So, um, angles come from the circle. They don't come from triangles. Triangles also come from the circle. But triangles were realized after angles. Okay? Angles were realized first, long before triangles. And again, these things are explained in my free article. There are no axioms or postulates in sound mathematics. So proposition six says if a triangle has two angles, like this red angle subtended on this side and this blue angle subtended on this side, and if these angles are equal, then these sides will be equal. Now, Euclid wouldn't have gone to all the trouble that he did in his uh, elements to describe these things. I mean, look at his proofs. They're very long, obfuscated, and not easy to understand at all. I mean, and a lot of them are proofs uh, by uh, reducing to the absurd. Okay, so uh, propositions four through nine are all about isosceles triangles. So let's leave that alone and see now how this thing works. So long before we got triangles, we had the circle and an angle is defined as the magnitude of the arc or the length of the arc but because we didn't have numbers then we could only talk about magnitudes right so numbers came much later only in book seven so it's the magnitude it's the ratio of the magnitude of the arc to the magnitude of the radius and now what is a ratio a ratio just simply means a comparison so in this case here yeah, the angle is equal to the comparison of this length to this length and likewise this length to this length that's all that a ratio means okay it's a comparison and it, a ratio does not mean this length here divided by this length okay because if it did mean that then you would have number and that is the meaning of number the meaning of number means that if these two uh aliquot parts of a ratio have a common measure then you can write them as a number with a vinculum either a horizontal line and this at the bottom or a slanty line like that okay there are no other numbers there's no such thing as a real number it's a myth there is no valid construction of real number in mathematics uh, you have myths like Dedekind and cuts and Cauchy sequences and uh, some other nonsense like uh, Eudoxus reels, etc. But none of those are valid constructions. They're all garbage. So, coming back to this, you will see that for these 
these uh, two angles to be equal, the sides must be equal, okay? So if we do that, as you can see now, the sides here are equal because they're subtended on the same magnitude arcs, okay? And I've put the numbers in there, but you don't need the numbers in there because that's what it means. It means if they are the same ratio, then they're equal, okay? Also, if they're in proportion to another ratio, uh, then they're also uh, considered the same angle. So, for example, this circle here could be expanded. Now, you say, well, how can I take an isosceles triangle and just do what I've done? Simply this, because any isosceles uh, triangle base can act as the diameter of a circle, in which case, all we need to do is consider these cases, okay? And we know that uh, if if the sides, if the angles are equal, then the sides will also be equal. And if we had to move this part down like this, then in a straight line, then these sides will remain equal and the angles will remain uh, equal because the arcs will shrink and so will the line segments. Okay? So, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not going to be covering all the propositions because a lot of them are not that important. I'll be moving on to the ones that I think are very important uh, to derive the concept of number. And so one of the uh, propositions that I'll be dealing with is obviously the one with similar triangles. Okay, And we'll get to that. I think it's in book three. And if I see anything else uh, before that proposition that needs to be covered, I will cover it first in another video. So that's all I have for this video. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Join me again for another interesting video to understand and learn what your ignorant educators, your math, your ignorant math educators couldn't tell you. And be sure to download my free ebook on the new calculus. Okay. So that's it for now. Goodbye.